So we came out to Chatfield this morning to do some aero testing. Uh, I'm using the, the Ghibli this morning. I did drive out to Chatfield because it is flat here. Just finished up the calibration ride. It's just um, basically 6K, three by 1K out, 1K back. And then you know, they're doing that to try to compare um, relative speed. So you have to keep it constant on the way down, on the way back, that's why you need it flat. But now in theory, I could do the aero testing anyway. I do want to keep it flat just to um, make sure that I'm testing you know, the same way uh, on for every test. I'm basically starting with my base race setup. I've taken this into the tunnel. Um, so, you know, that'll be the first run is the baseline. And then I'm going to tinker around a little bit. I'm going to try to add 20 mils up to see if that allows me to sink my head a little bit better, see what effect that has. Um, I'm going to try to move the bars back and for, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much uh, at the biggest reach that I can, but I'm going to try to uh, reduce that 20 mils, see if that makes a difference after I go up. So those first three will be the, you know, the first three runs that I do. Um, and, and then once I kind of figure out which one of those is the best, then I will um, play around with a few different bottle positions and um, yeah, see how many test runs we can get in today before the park gets uh, overrun with traffic by about 10 o'clock. So before you jump down my throat, None of the tests are actually being run with the camera next to me. Camera's coming up afterwards, getting the pictures for y'all, but it's not interfering with my dad, don't worry. So yeah, we spent the day out at Chatfield Reservoir. Uh, it's a, a flat area and we caught a relatively calmer day. Uh, so it was a great day for testing. Obviously the point of what we were doing was to try to refine the position and um, just really learn a little bit. Obviously I'm on the new um, VPRI, which you can check out my last video to kind of go through all the specs of the bike, but it is a little bit different than the VPR, which I taken to the tunnel and done a lot of testing on. So I really wanted to get an opportunity to refine and just make sure, you know, hopefully validate that things that I'm doing were right. And, you know, hopefully also find a little bit of, of free speed. Um, used the, the Ghibli sensor here. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively new company. There's, there's some benefits to this versus other devices on the market. Um, one, you don't have to have constant 5G connection if you use a, um, a speed sensor on the front hub. Um, the, the nose design is a little bit different than others on the market and that uh, really helps fa uh, cut out the wind noise. It also, in the algorithm, if it notices if like a truck goes by you and all of a sudden it gets a really weird number, it'll just cut that number out of the data. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to actually using this device versus some of the others. Um, and so that's the one that I went with for this, for this round of testing. And the way that I did it, I stripped the bike down. Basically, um, t uh, run number one was kind of the baseline. This is how I normally would ride with a bottle in the back, nothing on the frame, nothing between my arms. And that was just to get a, a set. Or, you know, this is my kind of the number that I'm trying to beat or work against. And then anything that I add, I you know, definitely don't want it to penalize. You have to carry um, nutrition in, in an Ironman. So you want to do it in a way that I, you know, definitely doesn't penalize you, but ideally if you find a way to do it where it can help you or be a little bit more aero. And, and so that was the whole reason why we went through the testing. I also had the baseline run first because I would change a few things. Like I changed stack height. I changed, um, you know, things that are going to mess with my position and I then returned to that baseline to do that run again, to be able to make sure that you know, I'm holding the same position. So, you know, I, I did the baseline test 
three or four different times just to make sure that the numbers were coming back as the same, everything was coming back out as expected. So started with baseline, then with the new VPRI, it's super easy to add stack and change the reach. Um, so that was uh, test number two. And um, then it didn't come out better. It, it was a little bit slower, not obnoxiously slower because I'm able to sync my head a little bit. Um, so I do want to come back and test that later on. I'll talk a little bit about that more later. Um, but I went back to the normal stack height that I have and the normal reach that I have. And then I started to add um, some of the bottles. So the, the first thing that I added was a, a between the arms bottle from Absolute Speed with the new rule changes that you can't put a kit or a bottle down your kit. This is something that pretty much puts the bottle in the same position. And so I was really excited about that. One, because that was an important part of my Ironman fueling strategy was grabbing just water from aid stations and that's what would go in my kit. Um, and I needed a way to replace that bottle and, and not have it penalize me. And so that's where this is gonna come in handy. And that tested very well. So I was very pleasantly surprised and happy with how that test went. And then I tested moving around um, the bottle position on the frame and then also uh, moving around the bottle position that's behind the saddle. And I I've tested the behind the saddle bottle a lot and you know every other bit of research that's been done on that says that I shouldn't be carrying the bottle like I am. But every time I've tested it in the tunnel, on the velodrome, and now on the road in a real world setting, um, I get a much faster position with the bottle like it is versus you know, what you know, the other data says, getting the bottle a little bit flatter would be faster. And I think a lot of that is because of how far forward I sit on the saddle. Um, it's just different. So the wind comes off my back and hits the saddle where most people who sit farther back, the wind comes off and goes behind the saddle. Um, I, you know, I'm not an engineer, but that's what makes sense in my head anyways. And it was good to get another piece of data that confirmed that the way that I have that bottle set up is, is the right way. Then the last thing um, that I tested was comparing the DT Swiss ARC 50 front wheel to the ARC 80. So there's conditions in, in higher winds and things like that where I would consider racing a little bit shallower in the front. Um, Kona, for example, is, is the main reason that I wanted to do that test just to see if there is a penalty and what that penalty would be. And so, you know, that was kind of all we had time for on the day. Um, it's a lot of testing. It was, you know, by the time I broke everything down, you test, you know, riding sweet spots threshold. Uh, and so I, I was doing these tests, you know, 6K at a time. And, you know, over the four hour span, I was about 80 minutes just under threshold of total riding, uh, which for what was supposed to be a day off <laughs> is a lot of riding. And so I was just happy to be able to get through all the tests that we did and um, yeah, get, get all the data that I needed to make some decisions moving forward. All right, so if you've made it this far, you finally get the point, you know, get what you wanted, I'm sure, all along, um, the actual numbers. So uh, I don't have these memorized, so pardon the whole notebook here, but, um, so the baseline, uh, first run was 0.208, which I'm happy with, um, especially for no kind of aero advantages and out in the real world. Obviously, if I'm in the tunnel, I don't have to worry about, you know, I can not have to worry about looking up, controlling the head position. So it's a little bit easier to get a lower number. And I'll talk about that with the last test that we, well, we did. But so, yeah, baseline was 0.208. Uh, when I went up um, 20 mils in, in uh, stack, it was 0.212, so a little bit worse, but not a ton worse. And um, I really want to spend some time between my last race and Kona um, talking or really testing that out to see if sitting up a little bit higher helps me produce a little bit more power. So doing... Um, since it's really easy to, you know, it, it took me maybe 10 minutes to, to add that stack. So really focusing on that and, and comparing power to heart rate on a number of rides. I don't have the time to do that between now and Lake Placid, but I will have a longer block 
uh, after. So this, this was good to know the, the drag, but now I wanna go and see if I'm a little bit more comfortable. Can I hold that position better for hours at a time? And can I produce better power at lower heart rates? So I'm not going away from that higher stack, even though it was a little bit of, of additional drag. So it's something that it could be my Ironman position is 20 mils higher than my 70.3 position moving forward. So more testing to be done on that. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy uh, that the number wasn't that bad. Um, so went back down, went back to baseline, and then added the absolute speed bottle. That went from point 0.208 on the baseline to point 0.202. So that's a fairly significant drop. Um, pretty happy with that. You know, that's in the four or five watt range by just adding a bottle between my arms. Um, plus what that does is it allows me to take the bottle off the frame. So I'll still use the storage hydration um, in, in the VPRI, the new um, hydration that's in the frame. And I'll just bring the straw up next to the absolute speed bottle cage. I can store another gel in there so I can get one more gel in the nose cone there. And you know, so this solves a lot of my issues for full Ironman racing nutrition plan. Um, so I was really happy about that. And you know, I did test a couple more things on that, which I'll, I'll cover in a second. Um, when I moved the rear bottle laying flat, uh, it added a lot. That was my worst test. It was 0.22. So yeah, that was a, a flat no-go. That was a, moved immediately back to normal. And then um, with the bottle on the frame, the best position that I got was 0.21. Uh, and so by, by adding the absolute speed, having the bottle behind me, and then removing that frame bottle, I saved three or four watts. So I, I reduced watts by adding the bottle and then I saved th a couple more watts by taking that frame bottle off. So again, that's another win um, and a great piece of knowledge moving forward. It also re reduces the side profile, so I'll perform even better in the crosswinds. Kona in mind. Um, and then the last test that I did um, was basically the wind tunnel style test where you know everybody posts their pictures when they're they can't look down the road um, but I you know was able to have um, a, a stretch of road where it was safe and I didn't really have to look up for 1 km so I kept the best possible position that I could and that was 0.19 which is you know fantastic um, you know that's about 30 watts <laughs> faster than you know my original baseline and you know, so to have that data is great because you know, for a course like Lake Placid, for example, um, you know, there's a long non-technical descent. So knowing that that's the place where I wanna be really snug down and basically what I did was I put my chin on the absolute um, speed bottle cage and that's where the big difference was made. Um, and so when I'm going at the highest speeds, that's where I can back the power way down and tuck the chin a, a lot more. You know, the second loop at Lake Placid, I probably can't do that because there's age group traffic and I need to be able to see what's going on. But even if it's just for, you know, 10 second stretches, um, that's a big uh, time savings. Another thing that I'm gonna test now, I have absolute speed sending me another uh, riser so it can get up a little bit. So I don't have to drop the chin quite as much. And so I'm gonna be able to test you know, pretty easily how that compares with having the bottle set a little bit higher. Um, yeah, so overall it was a great day of testing. Um, I'm able to take these numbers then and look in the app and play around with, okay, to, so to hold, you know, this is um, on average, this is gonna be the time savings for, you know, I can choose 40K, you know, all the way up to you know however long I want. So over 180K, this is how much time it's gonna save me by using this setup versus the other one. So it kind of does that rough math for you. And then you can um, go to the other, you know, the third setting and it'll allow you to say, well, this is how much power you have to produce holding that, um, that CDA to go a set speed. So if I wanna say 45 km or 50 kilometers an hour or whatever, it works in kilometers an hour because that's what everybody else outside of the US uses. So that's what the settings are, but you know, it's not that hard to do the math. Um, so you can set that up and you know, kind of really figure out how much power savings or how many watts you save by you know, one setup versus another setup. And that's where 
you know, the, the wheel choices might come into play. Whereas like if there's a high crosswind day in Kona, you know, if that means that I spend 10 minutes more out of the bars because my back is killing me, than I would if I made a little bit less aggressive, you know, you can kind of do that trade off math um, there, or, you know, you can in future tests use the stack height differences for comfort and power. And, you know, you can really use that um, page. You can also change the settings and, and choose incline or headwind or tailwind all within the app. And, and it just gives you more, more information. So it's not just about finding the most Aero position that's important, but it's also finding out where the trade offs are and is that juice worth the squeeze?